Hi, this is Dr. Von Hansen from Washburn University, and I'm going to talk to you about how to prepare the Mallet Etude for the 2020 KMEA Honor Band auditions. This year's Etude is Sonata No. 3, Movement 2 by Handel, transcribed by Thomas McMillan in the book Masterpieces for Marimba. So, to set yourself apart on this etude, you need to do more than just play the right notes at the right tempo. We need to add some phrasing and some shape and really pay attention to the dynamics throughout here. So, this first phrase can point out a lot of these things. So, there is this pickup bar that leads into the first bar. This sets up the rhythmic motive that is present throughout this entire piece, which is an offbeat leading to the downbeat. On the violin, which this is originally written for, this would be an up bow and then a down bow. But So it's a going to that next place. So I use the words to here. So if I was to sing this using the words to here, it would go like this. To here da 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 da, to here da 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 da, to here da da da, to here da 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 da, to here da 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 da, to here, to here, to here, and then we go to here. Okay? So that's telling me we are going somewhere. All music is either going to somewhere or coming from somewhere, and so using those words to here gives my brain focus for this forward motion. So something else we can do with this is we can follow the melodic contour with our dynamics to create a shaped phrase. That would go like this. To here da 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 da, to here da 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 da, to here da da da, to here da 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 da, to here da 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 da, to here, to here, to here, and then we go to here. To here. So that creates this shape throughout the first section that has this arc. Then we go down to mezzo forte, we have another arc, and it tapers off. So we're nice and soft, so this next forte has a nice arrival to it. So, one more thing with this first phrase that we have to pay attention to is there's some accents here. So I use this to show that I am confident. I really attack the start of this piece and make sure I have a lot of energy as I'm going into it. So I want to make sure that I play these accents, but I don't want to be thuddy and slapping into the instrument. So we want to really to hear da 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 da, to hear da 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 da, and play with this confidence and energy, but not with a bad sound. So if I apply all of these things together, it sounds like this on the marimba. At A, the main consideration is bringing out the melody. So there's a moving line on the downbeats and then there's these inner beats. The inner beats are not that important. What's important is the moving line. So I want to make sure that I'm putting just a slight accent on each one of those so that's what's popping out to the audience's ear. And then I'm going to shape this first by what the composer has put with their dynamics, which is leading to the third beat of the second bar. So now I have a two bar phrase, but I can create a six bar phrase by following the melodic contour of this ascending melody, so each line gets slightly louder, though I'm staying within the piano, it's piano, piano plus, almost mezzo piano, which then pushes us all the way from A to B. So what I want to do is I want to hear that half note melody that's underneath. That would sound like this on the marimba. So when I put in all the notes, it sounds like this. After I get that together at letter A, I'm going to apply that same idea to the four bars before C and the four bars before D. So I'm going to talk to you now about the fourth through sixth bars of letter B. There's two things that I want to take care of here. First are the tied A's. I want to have some forward motion as if I'm pulling on a bowstring and being able to bring out the sound. So I'm going to roll 
both of those A's, even though the second one is technically three sixteenth notes and is one sixteenth short of where it says at the top, roll a quarter plus. I'm gonna roll both of them. I'm gonna put a little crescendo into it and I'm gonna accentuate the downbeat that it's tied to so it has that motion. I'm actually gonna play the second one a little bit stronger than the first also to have some forward motion. So the second thing is the sixth bar, the staccato fortissimo notes. It is really easy to get a bad splatty sound by overplaying and playing too far through the bars here. So we need to talk about what we call touch. So touch is actually how we strike the instrument. So if you strike too far into the bar, you're gonna get these big splatty sounds because when you hit the bar, your mallet head stays on the bar and keeps it from vibrating. So we wanna play just into the bar a little bit so we get the bar to resonate and fill up the room without being these big splatty sounds. So I'll demonstrate what those sound like here. If I play two down into the bar, it gets a slappy sound. But if I bring my mallets up and I don't play too far through the bar, I can fill the whole room up with sound. So if I put these two things together, that sounds like this. At B, C, and D, we need to pay a lot of attention to the dynamics so we can play these and show our phrasing and musicality, but if we only play the dynamics that are written there, it doesn't quite move the music forward. We can play shaping of these runs within our dynamics. So letter C is a good example of how this works. Though there are some minimal dynamics written, each one of these 16th note runs, I'm going to push somewhere or come from somewhere so I know where my music is going. So if you see the notation I've put up here, I've added the crescendos and decrescendos that I'm actually playing to create more phrasing and more interest. So when I play that, that sounds like this. bring this piece to a final climactic end, I add some extra expressivity to a few of these bars. So four bars from the end, there's three quarter notes written that the piece says we should roll. I don't roll the third one so I can create some space before I start my final phrase. When I start those sixteenths, I need to make sure that I'm forte and I play all those sixteenths nice and strong. Then when the piano is written, I drop down, I'm thinking more pianissimo and I crescendo through that. When I reach my forte staccato notes, my crescendo isn't done. I'm gonna push all the way through the end through that last roll. I'm gonna crescendo that whole bottom line. And I add even more to it by doing a retardando on those rolls and really stretching out time and pushing off that final note to really announce the end of the piece. All of that together sounds like this. So notice, everything that I talked about today was musicality. We need to make sure that our music is always going somewhere or coming from somewhere, and that goes beyond the dynamics that are written on the page. We need to make sure we're making musical choices for the bigger picture of this piece. So if you apply these ideas, you'll be on your way to a successful audition. Feel free to reach out to me to ask any further questions you have, or if you want to play for me, and get some advice on some of your specific problems. I will be happy to work with anybody who reaches out to me through an email.